All you have to do is hang on, don't fall to your death. And if, I want you to imagine that if you let go of that thing, I'm, I'm dead. You're dying. Go ahead, jump up there. I don't even think I can hang on. You can get up there, go up there. Just reach up. Three, four, five. You're going to fall to your death. Don't die, bro. All right, welcome back, everybody. Once again, we're still here at the barn in beautiful Pittsfield, Vermont. As always, uh, I am Colonel Nye. I'll be joined again today by Sephra, Johnny, and Joe. And we're going to be talking about... And Mary. Um, Kelly Starrett. Kelly Starrett. Who mo Mobility Wad. Mobility Wad. You're helping me through the this The Supple Leopard. The, the Supple Leopard. The Supple that, Leopard is a book that he wrote? A book, book that he wrote, very famous book. And it is raining in Pittsville. <laughs> the groundwater is going to be but, really happy. And but so Marion, who's on the, the lights and is our wonderful producer, is going to edit all that sound out so we don't have to worry, we don't about, worry about any of that. Magic. Anyway. It always sounds perfect. Anyway, Joe, you, you interviewed Kelly. I interviewed Kelly. He had me doing some uh, interesting uh, mobility tests on myself. Now, I do a lot of yoga. Right. I thought I was, um, I had this thing knocked as far as mobility goes. And he actually, uh, he's got me doing some new things that I do every day now to Keep myself um, Is he the fit guy that got supple. you doing the uh, sit, sit down, stand up? He got me doing some sit down, stand ups. So he got me doing some, um, some flat footed squats. He's got me doing some cool stuff. He told me what my problem with my shoulders are, which yeah. is why you see me doing yeah, this yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. You got to do more pulling and less pushing, Joe. Uh, <laughs> I got to do something. One well, thing I just want to throw out for people right. who are going to watch this is that um, uh, CrossFit's very well known for getting strong and getting fast and getting fit. This is a guy who's made sure that CrossFit's also getting very um, opened up and, uh, and mobile. And it's, uh, it's saved a lot of people a lot of injuries, this guy. So if you want to stay fit, not just strong, watch this episode. All right, we are here for Spartan Up Podcast with Kelly Starrett of Mobility Wad. He's the owner, founder, co-founder, along with your wife. And surprisingly to me, because he's a big guy, He's also an endurance athlete. I mean, you're into whitewater rafting, long distances. You're about to do some crazy race with your wife. The Molokai. The Molokai. You know what's interesting? We're in this, I just want to just talk about endurance. Can you just, like, you're going to hold that kettlebell the entire thing. Yeah, and I'm thinking like a three or four hour uh, interview. Oh, it sounds good to me. What's, what you're going to see, though, is watch, watch his shoulders de de decay into internal rotation. It's going to be great. Right. Um, you know, we're living in this interesting age where the generalist is back. You know, I, I think you guys have done such a good job with Spartan Races saying, oh, you have a big set of lungs, but you don't know how to climb. And you actually don't know how to suffer. You know how to be uncomfortable. You know how to be scared. So how, how do we create that? I think the greater conversation in the world right now is, what's the programming look like to create a ready state so people are pretty good to go? I mean, like, really good to go. Not means ready like state, a, Ready state so that, like, if there was an earthquake, they could jump off the couch. Oh, no. I, I think, how about ready state is like, hey, we're going to go uh, hike the Grand Canyon this weekend. You with us? Sure. Hey, uh, you're going to move this piano for the next 20 minutes. I mean, like that, like a legit ready state. Oh, hey, we're going to do a week-long heli ski race and or heli. You know, I mean, how, how do we create it so that you also don't get injured unless, you know, someone tackles you? What, what does that look like? And also, how do you create skills so you can keep learning new skills? That's, that's could, you, could you be in a ready state uh, given today's technology? In other words, I end up sitting on a computer six hours, seven hours a day. Are you on the computer or are you sitting on the computer? Well, I'm not sitting on, I'm sitting down and typing, yes. I'm not standing. That's what I mean. So, yeah. so here's the, the issue is that I think we're seeing, we call this adaptation error, right? We, right now we're, we got interested in sitting, for example, because we noticed that some of the Division I universities we're working with, we're seeing the same sequela of problems. Same thing we saw in our tactical athletes, right? Short and anterior hip, posture like this, wonder why our arms don't go over our head, why we're having back problems, extension problems, why we're just losing performance. And when we started doing some informal surveys, we found out those guys were sitting 12 to 14 hours a day. And what those we, athletes. Those athletes, 12, 14 hours. And, and what the research, the physiology is really clear about you know, you can't cheat sitting. You can't, you know, you're gonna, everything down regulates, you know, and, but what we can also not talk, what we haven't been talking about is all the orthopedic issues around it, the, the adaptation that happens around it. And then the fact that basically you're just putting all these handbrakes on, you cannot sit in a mechanically good position. Every time you sit down, your hip is in neutral, pelvic floor turns off, diaphragm's compromised, forward head on neck, everything just shuts off. You can sit on the floor in a good position because you're designed to do that and that taking that hip to end range makes your pelvis stable. 
But what we're finding is that there's a whole lot of optional sitting that people are doing, because you're going to have to fly on an airplane, you're going to have to sit in the car, you're getting those are things. And we actually know how to fix that. But the rest of it is your, your choice. So what you're doing is you're saying, screw it, I'm going to screw myself, everything else that I do. And what, we've, what we're seeing is that we have a choice now, the, the mechanics are there, the, the, the tide change is there, the consciousness is there. For example, if you think sitting's a problem for you, is it okay for all of our school age children to sit all day long? But on that, how's a kid, how's a kid gonna be riding? I, I, does that make sense? Well, yeah, so the spin bike again, that's us saying, hey, let's try to pretend like we're exercising. Instead of, let's do the thing we're supposed to do, which is stand up. Okay. So standing is the gateway to movement, right? We're not gonna be compromised, but standing, if you go to a bar, your back starts to ache after a while, go to a concert and you're standing, right? Stand, stand and pray and rest, you're gonna just bake, especially if you're that sitting athlete. So one of the things that we're seeing is that, hey, look, you've gotta be in constant motion. And it's not a standing station to have a place to put your foot. That takes all the load out of your spine. And here's the deal. What we've done is we've, we've adopted our school. We have 100 stand-up desks at our school right now. And one of my daughters is at the first stand-up, first grade classroom. We're flipping the entire school next summer. It will be the first stand-up school in the world. And one of the things we found is this desk has this bar that pivots. And so kids put their foot on it and they're in constant motion. But now, most people, height, it's not high enough. So if, we, if you flip your hands up, the desk needs to be about one centimeter higher than that. And now I can lean against the desk, I have my foot up, I'm in constant motion, and it becomes really, really sustainable. And this is childhood obesity, because we're seeing that the calories are there, the inactivity is there, right? We're trying to get people up off their butts to go be active and have a life, but the rest of the thing is we can't overcome the problems of sitting. We can't overcome the problems of inactivity. How many is that many hours? That's right, right? I, oh, I totally agree. Right. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, one of my pieces of research when I was in physical therapy school was I looked at this person who was in, uh, detrained, she was in the hospital, intensive care, moved to transition care, and I would go and see her for my half hour allotted session, but I couldn't get her to exercise enough because she'd lay back down or barely sit, and the orthostatic hypotension, all the problems associated with her laying down and being inactive, I couldn't overcome that in that first half hour. So I started going on my lunch break and trying, and then I'd be like, hey, here's what we're gonna do. Every, every one hour, you have to do one squat out of the chair. And that was how I finally got ahead. And it turned out, <clears throat> just one hour of exercise, good for you, you're training, but the rest of your life looks like a, like a junk show. Yeah, yeah, it's a train wreck. Yeah. And then we're asking people to go out and do all these things, and we're just seeing the same sets of problems. This is really preventable. So for example, our daughters, we're not allowed to sit so on the couch. So you're on a crusade, on well, a sitting thing. look at this, is that, I spend a lot of my time talking about the problems and the mechanics around high-level performance. And what we're, what we're really doing is we're taking what we think is this Formula One, all the lessons we learn in highest levels of sport, which is really the highest levels of physical self-actualization we come across. And if we can't take those lessons and spin them backwards and really try to change everyone else or apply the lessons, then sport is just circus. And you know from your work that everyone, there's no off button. You know what the off button is? Breaking. Yeah, right. Literally something fails, like you black out. You, you go into, you, you hurt, know, something, you hurt yeah. something. Like that's, that's why you stop. Otherwise, this thing's too strong. So you can overcome you know, being a troglodyte and stuck, but we have figured it out. We figured out you can, how to eat better. We figured out how to, basic movement practices. We know the answers, what you're saying. We're it, just not applying. We're not, that's right. And so. <clears throat> so you, so I, we, I'm on a crusade to get rid of the couch. You, you, you're beyond that. You want any well, sitting gone. Well, well, you know, I think, I think let's, let's sit on the ground. So. so you know, in, in cultures that toilet on the ground, sleep on the ground, people don't fall. There's like zero fall risk. So, I mean, that's, you know, they can get up off the ground. The number one reason you end up in a nursing home is you, you can't get up off the ground. But if you're always on the ground, you're not gonna fall. you don't lose it. Right. Like, you, your hip range of motion doesn't go away. We think, I was having this conversation with our friend Mark Bell, who is a power lifter, really good power lifter. And, and I was like, hey Mark, here's the problem. You haven't actually taken your hip to full range of motion in maybe eh, two months. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you sit at the edge of the bed, 90, right? Toilet, 90. Chair, 90. Car, 90. Squat to 90. I'm like, when's the last time you actually did your whole, like hip in the full range? If we take that to the average person, they basically have these huge movement windows, and they're just looking out this little tiny corner, and then the window just gets opaque. Great analogy. You know, so yeah. well, I think there's two things. One is that people don't know what the problem is, or that they're even missing capacity, How until you know? we show Everybody, Everybody's sitting down, how would you know? Well, or right. even just, I can move around, I can get on the spin bike, yeah. stay in my little tiny corner, I get on the elliptical machine, my hip never comes back in extension the elliptical machine. So you're fundamentally losing one of these skills, right? So what's interesting is, we sort of have 
we have this divergence. And one of the things I think that really speaks to us about the Spartan race is that you are coming up against your psychological barriers. Like, I, I don't know, do, do you do the, the electrical wires in the... I'm not big on that. Everything's gotta be athletic in nature. And <laughs> yeah, not, I, I not, think it was some yeah. other crazy race. I think they're out of business, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, it's, I was just gonna say, because one of my friends got, was knocked unconscious like two or three times by these things, right? But what, that's not a psychological test. A psychological test is being uncomfortable, but still being able to move, right? And what we're seeing is that we need to expose people to their limits in a fun, self-actualizing way where you learn data about yourself. Right. You know, one of the reasons CrossFit has been so excellent is that CrossFit asks you to have full physical capacity. And it turns out most people don't. You through, know? through an entire range of motion. Yeah, well, just right. show me that you can actually have range of motion, then you have the motor control, you actually have the skill to do it. I'm not even talking about your fitness, right? As a background, how fit are you, how strong are you? That's really sort of a side effect. But we have to have a systematic way of figuring out what the hell is going on, but also in here. And you know, I think we've gotten in an age, and you can even speak to this for the last five, ye five years particularly, the ship has sailed, everyone is working hard. I mean, we're seeing that intensity is the name of the game, you know, okay. how fast these guys are doing the Spartan race, men and women now, it's really fast. Like they are really, really good athletes. No, the, the, the game, the, the bar has been lifted. It's, it's, yeah. So if that piece is up, well, what, what's the conversation now? Well, the conversation is intellectually what's happening. And also, the, I think the ship has sailed. Like, we, you can't just be a piece of meat anymore. Because what we've seen for the last 20 years is that athletes break or they don't break. And then, you know, so it's just a mystery. I mean, I either broke or I didn't break or I survived or I got injured or I had my third ACL surgery or my third hernia. Well, what's going on? So we need a diagnostic tool and then we need to kind of continually test ourselves. And I, I think that's why you've really tapped into this. So I don't think people have gotten, gotten good at being uncomfortable. You may disagree with me. We, we didn't have a chance to talk in advance, but um, I think I got lucky in that my mother and her brothers were into yoga in the 70s, early 70s, in Queens, New York, which is pretty unbelievable. Uh, maybe out in India, certainly, in California, maybe, but not in Queens. And um, so she got me into it. And, and so everybody says, you didn't get injured, you ran all these distances. No, I, because I stretched a lot. So I don't know if you, I would assume that's one of your things. Well, you know, stretching is, a, is not a complete word, right? But what yoga is, is a movement practice. And one of the issues that we're up against right now is we just see that people don't know how to breathe, right? So show me that you can maintain these stable positions and actually breathe. So when we look at, like, there's a concept we call mechanical ventilation efficiency, which is a fancy word for saying, here's what your capacity is to actually have the mechanics of your breathing. Forget the physiologic adaptations of aerobics and, and the reason we train. Just how well do you breathe? Right. And one of the things that we're seeing is that people don't know how to downregulate. They don't know how to turn off. And one of the reasons they can't is that they're in this wretched diaphragm compressed position. From that it's all city. stress yeah. breathing, yeah. right? They're all up here all the time. And so what we know is, hey, if I have a breathing practice or I, that's part of the part and parcel of what a good movement strategies are, and that's what yoga does. One of the things that yoga is built in is this breathing practice. Then I see efficiency in ventilation, so I have better aerobic function. I can't tell you how many elite athletes I know, like Courtney was over there, national champion gymnast. Can we spin around and take a look? National champ, she's about to lift, um, I don't know how much weight. Wave court, is. you're on camera again. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have you know national champion gymnast, yeah. but really good at holding her breath intermittently. <laughs> but terrible at breathing Thrill. under sustained load. Right. And so what we're, what we're finding out is that the diversity of skills that w people should have because they should have a physical practice or they should have physical practices that demand this as part of the physical practice, right? You don't have to be conscious of it. It's just already part of the system. Those things have eroded. What we've said is do things that look like exercise, that smell like fitness, and that's good enough. And then, of course, people are breaking. So... You know, this mechanical ventilation piece is that you know, we're seeing that people can't breathe, they can't downregulate, you know, and one of the things that's built into this yoga is, you know, show me you can be in these positions and actually breathe. be stable in those positions. That's what we're practicing, you know. Is yoga the, the magic bullet? No, otherwise yoga would have cured cancer. But it was really a good intention thought of serious people thinking about the problems of the human being. Body, yeah. and, and more importantly, what we're confusing is we're confusing exercise for movement practice. We were lecturing at Stanford Med School 
As everyone raised their hand, I'm like, what do you do for you know, movement practice? And she's like, a swimmer, I'm like, exercise. Runner, exercise. Biker, exercise. You know, it's great exercise, but it's an incomplete. And this girl's like, Pilates, I'm like, movement practice. Yoga, movement practice. CrossFit, movement practice. So you have to have a movement practice and then go do your sport. But you it. cannot lie to yourself that you're doing sport exercise. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Let's take a break. Um, I guess I gotta keep carrying this thing and um, maybe we'll do some burpees I or something. It, I love it. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. When can I drop this thing? You can't. I can't drop it. No, I mean for the rest of the trip, right? You're uh, in San this, Francisco? This is it? Actually, when people don't realize, when they get off the airplane, we hand them a kettlebell. That's Welcome it? to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so um, it's pretty awesome that we're connecting and sharing this stuff. I mean, you're... You're verbalizing a lot of stuff I've been thinking about and we've been thinking about at Spartan. I think it's coincidence that we're... Uh... No. Buck, I said this before, but Buckminster Fuller has this great concept called mutually accommodating systems. And that all systems that are inherently correct, that don't have a type 1 error built in, they all accommodate. And we're all going to, if your system is thinking, then what we should think is, boy, we're, well, they're all going to integrate. And we'll, we'll have different approaches, right? That's a methodology conversation, but not a principle-based problem or principle-level conversation. What's happening now is... So, so the fact that Mobility Wad and Spartan are talking, we've got systems that are working, but maybe together, one plus one equals three is what you're really, saying. Absolutely. Right. And what's great is, you know, we have so many people who have solved a set of problems. Like, one of the things that I really like, like, I'm an advocate for, I'm like, go, go sign up for a race. Have it lurk over your head. Like, have it just like, you wake Way up and you're you. like, oh, crap, I got to compete in three weeks, right? And, and it's a little bit unknown. And I think that's one of the nice things, that you show up and you're not sure what you're going to get, and you're not sure how you're going to do that day. But it also forces people to sort of, you know, what do they say, deadlines focus the mind. Yeah. Your, your, your nutrition starts to become more serious. It actually matters. Not just so that you look good in a bathing suit at some undisclosed time, but like if you don't eat right, you're not going to train today. If you don't sleep right, it's going to be crap, and you're going to suffer. You know the forces suffering. Forces you into coming. a healthy box. Totally. Yeah. So what, we're, what we are seeing is if we've solved these sets of problems, you have created a, a, a movement game where that really makes people psychologically uncomfortable. Right, and then then you've tapped in and solved a lot of the psychology that you know I have to take people and get them scared. I don't have to do that. And and the conversations of the lessons you've learned. At how many people have done Spartan so far? Millions. Millions. So what we start to see is patterns at a million n level, and then we can take those best principles and say, well, what? How does that affect your life every day? And then I don't have to solve that problem. So what we're, what we're seeing right now in the universe is. We're de-siloing these pockets of like really deep embodied knowledge and we're sharing them. And that's why we're, if we don't solve or get ahead of some of the real problems of the human condition in this generation, shame on us. Like we have all the tools at our, our disposal. Which, which is what you're doing with the school, right? Getting the kids to stand up for yeah, school. Yeah, that's right. right. And, and we, just, we just spun it backwards. You know, we've partnered with Donor's Shoes. Um, you know, what we think is this is childhood obesity in America. You know, kids who stand burn an additional 25 to 35% more calories a day. And now we have a conversation about moving, right? And now at least we, we haven't shut the door. Are they learning better standing up? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. It turns out, check this out. The reason you have a brain in the first place is to move through the environment. And that, in fact, they think cognition is really the internalization of movement, right? But the only reason you have a nervous system is that so you can sense change in the environment, react to it, and ultimately reproduce, run away, feed yourself, fight, and all those things, right? But it turns out that these are integrated systems. So we have the old reptile brain, and then cognition, the neocortex, is bootstrapped on top of that thing. These are integrated systems, and so you can't get through one or the other. To say you don't have a movement practice means that you're an incomplete thinker. To say you're a thinker or a, you, know, you, you have a movement practice and you don't engage in some kind of cognitive dissonant like challenge, you're still incomplete. And that's why we think that the, what's so great about good strength and conditioning programming is not testing your ability to suffer, it's testing your ability to think of problems, problem solve, while, plan. While under pressure. That's right. right. Like, you know, we, 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 I hammer on people in the gym when they write their, their reps. I'm like, what do you mean you can't count to 10 on the, on the floor? Like, quit it. Be a piece of meat. You need to know what's going on, especially if you're competing, who's next to me. You don't get to go in the pain cave and look out through the straw. You need to be cognizant of what's who's around on? you, how much you're eating, what's happening. And that, that's going to take practice to be... So cognitively aware. I was in a race once and um, we had to start a fire and it was pouring rain. And I'm struggling obviously in the rain to get this fire started. And to the right, a Marine shows up. And again, like you just suggested, I don't, I want to focus on what I'm doing. I'm not really paying attention, but you can't help it. And you see this giant fire start up and I'm thinking, 
I don't know what they teach Marines. <laughs> like, I'm struggling here for 20 minutes, this guy. Well, it turns out I didn't listen to the rules. The rules were start a fire. He went and grabbed a candle and started a fire. I'm sitting there trying to rub two sticks together. Well, that's, you know, I think that's uh, Charles Poliquin, you know, yeah. great thinker, all, all aspects of performance, used to make his, uh, take his, his first responder firemen and guys and stuff, and he'd like run them up the stairs, and like, you know, and then he'd be on the top, and they'd all be blown out and be like, all right, here's the patient. You know, which, you know, here's this, and they'd be like, ah, what, what, I have to do, and you're like, what, what good to you, so you're, you're a piece of meat. Right. You know, and I think what's interesting is these are practice skills, but we have to give people a chance. What we've told people, this is not their fault. People have bought into what we as a community were like, this is who, how you train, you go and you, you jump on this no, elliptical. normal is normal, right? Normal is normal. Right. So, but now we kind of redefine that. And one of the things that out of that is, we can get, start to get some health issues. So like, like we believe that 98% of the orthopedic problems on the planet are preventable diseases. You just don't even have a, a, an idea. The only way you know you're having a problem is when you, you literally start to sick. flame yeah. or get right. sick or blow up. Right. So how do we turn that around to a set of leading indicators Right. So that we can, and that's mechanics, that's tissue health, and that's part of the conversation of this, like, what does it mean to, like, embody what it means to be human? Well, to not kind of care for this thing or ever make it scared or to not know, I mean, if you have to fly in here for me to tell your quads are tight, right. we're, we're wasting our time. Got a that's not a good, yeah. that's not a use time. But it's a big conversation, and it's a conversation that needs to happen a little bit every day. I love it. I mean, I didn't even know we were going here, and I love it. I thought I was walking into a regular CrossFit gym. Now, now I feel like I've walked into Einstein's CrossFit gym. Holy, holy moly. Well, hold on to your butt. You know, I think um, the only thing that the rate limiter here is our ability to share. And we, you know, we started by trying to really get, you know, around physical therapy and performance and mechanics is shift from injury prevention to how do we optimize? How do, how do we create the absolute ready state for the human? around sleep and hydration, nutrition, mechanics. Show me you can do that stuff. And now we can have a conversation, not about are you the best in the world, but are you the best for you? And I would bet if we tested you, you would have the genes that show that you have good tissue health and resilience. But there's actually a gene that we can test for that makes you more susceptible to Achilles injuries and tendinopathies. You just don't make the right kind of collagen. You don't express that, right? Yeah, so that means that your performance, your mechanics have to be even more important. That's what it means. You're not, you don't get a, a, it's not apologetics, right? You don't get to excuse yourself from being human. Yeah. But it means that, hey, you gotta pay attention a little bit more. Well, we just did this genetic testing. It turns out my wife and I are what we call aerobic responders. We're aerobic athletes, but I have been cramming myself into a round hole as a square peg for the last 10 years. You know, really, I think I started, I mean, I lifted weights in high school, but I didn't really start training. I mean, I was doing some Olympic lifting, but CrossFit forced me into learning how to power lift, Olympic lift, you know, and, and no, I'm not even strong compared to my, you but, know. So you're saying, based on your genes, you responded better to a certain kind of exercise. I, that's what I've learned out, but right. so, you know, how did we get here? Well, you know, all I've been and doing that's is... that's the back room over there. They take a slice of skin and start testing your genes. <laughs> pretty much. Right. That's, it's pretty much that simple now. And, right. um, you know, companies like Athletogen, like you can take your 23andMe data and really run it through and you get like, who's who? You, this, here's the best way to train to express your genetics. I'm just, I'm just visualizing like a long distance runner walks into the back room and comes out pissed off because he's like... He's a power lifter. I'm, I'm a power lifter. <laughs> no, it, expl it explains a lot why some people suffer... Right. Have, you know, don't don't respond. But so for our my training for this 50k open ocean race, yeah. is that I do a lot bigger aerobic block pieces now than these power blocks. So I'm not doing three and five minute repeats. I do some of those, but I'm doing 25, 30, 45 minute blocks because right. that's how my body is going to you know just give what right. So right. But we're finding out about your nutrition, about your sleep. We can really start to crack this, and that means we have more data to even get you more optimized. That's so, what's fun. So this is way past how long we typically go for it, but I'm having a lot of fun here, so if you don't mind, we're gonna oh, no, keep going. Good. So let's switch to business. At the end of the day, this podcast is about um, how do you become more successful. You covered a lot of it by saying, well, be healthy. If you're healthy, you're gonna be more successful, right? The brain is part of the body. That's what you just well, said. Well, and you can't, look, I don't think there's, a, for the average person who's listening and thinking about these things, it's not an issue of working harder. It's about creating a, a platform where you can sustain stress because all you have to do is have a kid and then tell me how your perfect sleep cycle goes right, sure, right. And, and you know and, and try to manage I mean and especially I think the conversation gets interesting in your late 30s early 40s you know you're sort of coming to an understanding who you are you have some kids maybe you're, you're kind of in business and I'm watching a lot of men that I know in this area not, you know struggle with how do I be a good dad how do I be a good partner how do I you know continue to like 
pay the mortgage. Right. And what I can say is, what can you control? Well, you can control how many carbohydrates you're stuffing down in the morning. You can control, do you have a movement practice? You know, we say first, be consistent before you're heroic. But if this thing is, is working right, then at least we have a conversation that you're not going to auger in. I was just talking to a, uh, an executive friend of ours who literally was suicidal not too long ago. We got him because I was like, hey, look, this is, you're falling apart because you're a stress case and you don't Success, sleep. Successful executive? Yeah. Right. And, um, but you know, falling apart everywhere else. But falling apart everywhere else. Right. And I'm like, look, you've got to control this. And as soon as he started to get a little bit, one handhold led to another handhold. And then he's like, oh, of course, his yep. business is better. You've seen that show, Mad Men? Yeah. Right? I mean, that was you and I, 10, 15 years ago, you think about an executive, that's what you thought about, right? Somebody in a suit, kind of out of shape. Um, you didn't necessarily associate success in business with success in the gym. No. Right? Well, what, what we need, to, again, what you need to say is these are integrated systems. Yeah. And, and if you're not caring for the machine, all it takes is one little heart attack. I mean, people are always were pointing out, they're like, Bill Clinton, he only sleeps like four hours a night. And I'm like, he died of a heart attack. We kept him alive, like artificially. His body said, oh, it doesn't work, you're a stress case, you died. Right. I mean, that, that's remarkable. You're awesome. Dude. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, so Joe, first of all, how, for the people on radio, you were holding the kettlebell the entire interview. I was. Uh, but how, how heavy, because I couldn't tell. I'm guessing, we'd have to ask Kelly, but 40 pounds wasn't, wasn't uh, super heavy. Looked like it got heavy. It <laughs> got heavy. To anything gets heavy towards sure. the end. Yeah, sure, yeah. Forty pounds. Yeah. Holding your your arm for what thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean. Um, Try holding baby. I'm on film, so you do anything on film. So <laughs> Kelly, obviously, like we talked about, has become famous for this mobility wide, and he he made a comment where he said, um, "Everyone's working hard. Everyone's putting in max effort." but you can't be a piece of meat. You have to stay fit and supple. And, and, uh, and, I, and I really like, you know, he talked about that so much of what we do is controlled motion, you know, whether it's squats, whether it's on a treadmill, whatever it is, it's all contained. And so we're, the things he has you doing and the things he had people doing are about getting out of that normal range of motion, actually really keeping everything long and lean and stretched. And I think that's so important. And you know, so many bodybuilders, so many uh, weightlifters, even so many personal trainers don't do that at all. And there's so many injuries because of it. Yeah, that convergence of uh, yoga and mm -hmm. gymnastics and bodybuilding. And that's where it really comes together. I remember my uncle telling me, I was probably 13 years old, and he said, that's cool that you're lifting weights, you wanna be strong, but if you were flexible, and strong, then you really got it knocked. Yeah, yeah. And not everybody gets that message. Yeah. yeah. He got my attention when he was talking about the sitting. And in no position, you know, that we're not built to sit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in no position is it good for you. So it's not only a question of sitting on a couch or laying down on a couch, those kinds of things, but just yeah. sitting in general. And of course, you know, the stand up desk and that whole revolution or sitting on the ball. Yeah, I went to I went things. to his house and they have no seats. We yeah. had dinner, we all had a squat. I have our family yeah. stands when we No eat. toilet bowl. <laughs> Got a squat. <laughs> That's better for your bowels. Yeah, That's better yeah, for your but, bowels. But, but again, he, he, I thought it was interesting when he said the societies or cultures that don't have chairs, the people who sit on the ground that squat, you know, a lot of the Asian cultures, they also don't have problems as they get older with falling down. Yep. Sure. Because their bodies are used to, I don't know if it's a, just the movement is built in or they well, have a... What, when, when you sit, everything lets go completely. And right. the longer you stay there, the more lax that gets. Yeah. So that's why when you fall, there's no core strength. If you spend your whole life squatting, um, you just stay strong through your core the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just thought it was interesting. Over, overall, uh, not your typical weightlifting, knuckle dragging kind of guy. This is a very. And a monster of a guy at the same oh, time. Big dude. Big yeah, guy. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, Shoulders pulled so back. He, perfect. So, he, so yeah. he looks like that guy. Yeah. Thanks, but as soon as he's opening his mouth, you're like, oh, this guy is, uh, this guy is like Sephra. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Thanks, guys. Smart. The gold yeah. standard for smart. Smart. Yeah. He's got oh, the language yeah. skills. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. He knows. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. And yeah. Super well respected in the in the CrossFit community. Yeah. yeah. I thought another thing that was interesting when he was talking about breathing. He was talking about the uh, the gymnast who um, was really good at the <laughs> the short like contracting I breaths, but couldn't breathe cycling through stuff. And amazing that you know that they're now working on those elements. It's not just how strong can you get, but that whole range of everything. But, sure. Well, you said breathing has been eroded over time. Yeah, yeah. and I just. Again, I sitting, guess. right? You sit, yeah. your lungs collapse, everything's crunched down, and I like that. I think, I think, um, I think breathing is a huge thing. Uh, in some of the the survival schools my brother and I have gone to, they one of the first things they teach you is I still can't do it properly, but breathing into your belly, right? Because there's like that flight or flight thing, and a lot of it when you get scared and you want to run away, 
you like, am I breathing? Am I breathing properly? Or like when yeah, you're yeah, rock yeah. climbing right. stuff, and it's like you have a hard hold. It's like, am I breathing? And then you breathe, and things get easier. I'm sure you. You know, when when you're like in you that moment. Me about that. No, no, but you when in a moment of terror mm-hmm. comes, you, you know, you, you you tense up, right? You d- you don't breathe. For you. I remember uh, once on a commercial flight, because Joe will make this a military thing, and it wasn't, <laughs> uh, was going down a runway in Guam. And just as we started to take off, the, the front wheel came up, and then the front wheel came down, and we went for a slide, and all these people were screaming and shouting, and I kind of congratulated myself for a second. said, look at me. I'm so much better trained than these people. I'm so much better off. Yeah. I didn't make a sound. And then I realized, because this was in my head, I had like the chair in front of me. I almost ripped it in half. <laughs> And I couldn't undo my hands, <laughs> and I hadn't been breathing. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because right. it was that moment of just sheer terror that you don't expect. It came out of nowhere. All There's right. no way to brace for it. You're getting ready to come up, and then you go right down immediately. It, it gets your attention very quickly. Sure. But, but you stop breathing is the key. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you got to get that back and get it under control immediately. Breathing, mobility, yeah. right? Having strength throughout the entire range of motion so that... You're not just doing curls in this little range of motion or whatever it is the exercise you're doing, right? right? Squats yeah. that aren't going all the way down. Just functional movement. Yeah, functional movement. Functional movement. Towards the end of the day, Marion, our camera person, jumps in and starts speaking. Well, she has so many brilliant things to say. But I think I think a lot of it too is a lot of diseases, it can't survive in well oxygenated blood. So when you're going up and down on your head and you're letting all your blood circulate when it's flowing mm-hmm. through, it's that type of stuff that keeps your blood clean, keeps Burpees, it really the ultimate exercise. Oh, careful, Top careful. to bottom, yeah, vertical, yeah, horizontal. One. I'll keep doing it for the rest of the long run. Right, so while well, Sapphire finishes her 30 let's burpees this out a little bit. that she's yes. going to do, yeah, we're going to encourage you to go to SpartanUpPodcast.com, learn more about Mobility Wild. There will be a link there to their site. Keep going, keep going. Dude, you're a little slow uh, on that Because if you're a billionaire from watching all the other podcasts, right, exactly. but you can't get up when you fall down, what good is it? Doesn't get any good at all. Find show notes, video, and audio from this episode at SpartanUpPodcast.com backslash 055. Thank you for listening to another epic story of success. Follow us on Twitter at Spartan Up Pod. The Spartan Up Podcast is brought to you by Spartan. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Oh.